former treasurer of the conference funds and brother Ivan Caesar, president of the district men's commission. They've all asked for their condolences to be extended to you, Lady Innes, and members of the family. Mindful that we are met then in this solemn moment to commend probing Ellsworth Innes into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall to mind the life and the legacy of our deceased brother and in humble trust hear the words of Holy Scripture. And so I invite now the Honorable Prime Minister to lead us in the responsive reading, Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. We are consumed by your anger. By your wrath, we are overwhelmed. All our days passed away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper us, the work of our hands. This is the word. may be seated, and I believe that Sir Probin would 
not want me to not acknowledge the presence of the band of local preachers in the Methodist church, knowing that he was a faithful member of that band. And so I want to recognize especially the band of preachers from the St. Kitts circuit. And I believe that there are preachers also from the Nevis circuit who are present. And so, indeed, all of the local preachers across the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and Americas who might be present uh, at this time. Let me invite now the daughter of Soprobin, Mrs. Angela Innes Hodge, to read with us the epistle. a new heaven and a new earth for the first earth and the first sorry for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more i saw the holy city the new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of, as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things and I will be their God and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. say thank you to Mrs. Angela Innes Hodge, daughter of Sir Probin Innes. We continue now with a solo by Miss Davida Brown, goddaughter of the deceased. Miss Davida Brown. I'd just like to say a little bit of um, how much Sir Probin Innes was as a godfather to me. Um, he will remain as a role model and an inspiration in my life. Every time I sat with him, he only had words of encouragement and wisdom for me. And I will take them with me as I 
him forward in life and always remember him for that. Um, the last time I saw him last year, as he was coming out of the hospital, I sang a little bit of a song for him. And this song comes from Sam 121. To mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be. keepeth thee. He will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade. Oh. 
of my help cometh from the Lord. Thank you very much. And now Mr. Probin E. Ines, Jr., son of the deceased, will come now and present for us the eulogy. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Ennis family, I'd like to take this time to thank everyone across the nation for the generous outpouring of love and support that we've received in recent days. Please be assured that it has been comforting and your love has lessened the carriage of this awesome burden of pain and sorrow. The life and work of my late father, Saprobin Ellsworth Innes, MBE, provides an outstanding chronicle of achievements and exceptional service. It is therefore fitting that so many are here today to pay, to pay their final respects. In all of this sadness, I must say that my family has managed to keep the faith and to hold strong just as daddy would have hoped. And I have been exceptionally moved by the strength exemplified, exemplified sorry, by my mother, Lady Rosamond Innes. The loss of a loved one is never easy. It is often more difficult when the earthly departure is sadden. Our dad has had much more to give and so much more to share with the people of this great federation. He will be sadly missed. However, as a Christian family, we question not the actions of God, nor the designs of his hands on us before, sorry. We, not, we don't question the actions of God, nor the designs he has for us beyond our time here on earth. Over the past few days, I've had the opportunity to speak with so many who have been so thoughtful and offered kind words. And I am at peace in knowing that daddy is in a better place. Over the past few days, I've had the opportunity to speak with several folks and several people who have made my mom's and my sister's days much more comfortable. People of all walks of life have reminded me about dad's early days, especially in the civil service. His time as governor, his law practice, and his social crusade to educate his fellow citizens about history and heritage. The sentiments have been most gratifying. Saprobin served as governor of the Associated States of St. Kitts, Nevis, and Anguilla from 1975 to 1980, and as governor of St. Kitts, Nevis from 1980 to 81, when Anguilla formally separated. After being appointed, he became Knight Bachelor and was invested by Queen Elizabeth II in July 1976. As a man who believes so much in heritage, I always found it interesting that he was elevated to the governorship on Emancipation Day, August 1st, 1975, at the age of 38. He was perhaps the youngest person to have held such a position in the Caribbean. There's no secret that my father had great admiration for the late premier, Robert Bratcher, 
who recommended him to succeed to Milton P. Allen. And Bradshaw, too, respected his talents and his abilities. When dad and mom got married in 1962, Mr. Bradshaw insisted that he would drive my parents in his vehicle to their home. And of course, my, my parents were very thankful. Daddy also served in government as the parliamentary secretary for, sorry, as the permanent secretary um, of establishment, chief secretary, and cabinet secretary. It is, however, in 1961 that my dad was called to the bar after completing his studies at the Mona campus at the University of West Indies, Jamaica. But before coming a lawyer, becoming a lawyer, dad was also a teacher. Not many, of, not many are aware that he also acted as manager of Zed Island Radio in 1966. He is credited for his Sunday Magazine program that featured poetry, music, and information. His theme song was, When We Come to the End of a Perfect Day. Acting manager Innes was said to be one who introduced local news when he revamped the station's news format. The quality of Saproben's work as governor is well known. So too is his work as an author of various books, including Historic Bastier, Witherbound St. Kitts Nevis, Memorable Quotations, 40 Years of Struggle, and Methodism in St. Kitts from 19, sorry, from 1787 to 2006. These have all been masterpieces that are now part of the historic treasures of our people. However, may I ask your permission just to reflect on Sir Proben Innes the father and the husband. To you, he was a lawyer, a historian, and governor. But to my sisters, Angela and Massier, and myself, he was just simply dad. More importantly, he was the husband that my mother, Lady Rosamond Innes, had as her partner for what would have been this year, 55 years. Their marriage formed the structure or bedrock of our family and the beacon that guided our development. It was Steve Saint who said, your story is the greatest legacy that you will leave to your friends. It's the longest lasting legacy that you will leave to your ears. And dad was most assuredly has left us rich, a rich social inheritance. I am proud to say that my dad lived a life that was focused on love, integrity, and public service. The best words that I can use to encapsulate my father's life are integrity, humility, honesty, respectfulness, he was altruistic, dedicated, and principled. Here was a man who came from very humble beginnings, but allowed no obstacle to stand in his path. He used his God-given talents 
to rise to the highest heights of the social and political echelons of these islands. And though he walked with queens, princesses, princes, and head of state, he remained grounded, always remembering who he was and from whence he came. He treated all with the same dignity and accord, never mind their economic or social realities. As many of you are aware, Saprobin was born in Challenger's Village on November 18th, 1936. This was actually the first village on the island that allowed black people to buy and own their own land. Challenges was the place where he grew up with his parents and most of his siblings. His brothers include Vincent Innes, Lorenzo Otley, and his sisters, Althea Purcell, Ruth Watkins, Tribina Otley, and Constance Donovan. His mother was Ivy Keynes Otley, who also grew up in the same village. His father died at a very early age, and this loss, I think, shaped dad's beliefs in the importance of family and faith. Daddy was always told about how intelligent his father was, but that his one vice for alcohol also denied longevity of life. And that is why my dad never consumed alcohol. There's no doubt that his early years in challenges helped to shape his character. And he ensured that he and my mother passed these fine qualities to their children. They taught us lifelong lessons that molded the adults we've become today. Growing up in government house during the time of the governorship of my dad, I was very young. We were all at a very impressionable stage in our lives. Life at government house was filled with formal and social activities mixed with government business and serious discourse including with the four premiers who served during Daddy's time as head of state. These include Robert Bratcher, Paul Southwell, Lee L. Moore, and Dr. Kennedy Simmons. Though at times I would sneak a peek, just a little peek, when the official cocktail parties were being hosted, I was too young to engage and understand. But I, as a baby of the family, never realized how significant that period was and the experiences at Government House would be in my later life. Those are discussions I leave for others. Our parents instilled in us the simple truth that while we were occupants of government house and children of the head of state, we were not better than, nor were we spoiled or allowed to feel privileged. Instead, we were taught that because of our circumstance, because of our circumstance, we had to be kind, we had to be thoughtful, and we had to act responsibly given our position. As you know, governors have constant police and security presence 